This is a hidden gem in the outdoor industry, and it must hide in plain sight because Bushnells are everywhere. You can't seem to miss them. But this is one that maybe you kind of forgot about. This is the Bushnell Nitro, and this has a very interesting form factor. If you are the kind of guy that you have a rifle you want to use during deer season, and then maybe you want to be able to use it for coyotes later, and then you want to be able to knock down some targets during the summer, and you just want to be able to do it all with that one rifle, then this may be the scope for you. This is going to take a lot of the good things that you get from a deer rifle and scale them up a little bit more toward the tactical side. And it's gonna take a lot of this stuff from the tactical side, throw out a bunch of the things you don't need, and it all ends up right here. This one is a three to 12 by 44 millimeter scope, and this is really set up for great success for a lot of you guys. If you have a 308, a 223, uh, heck, even if you have a Magnum, this is gonna do some things that a lot of other scopes won't. So to start out with, we're throwing away the one inch tube that you're typically gonna get from a deer scope. This is gonna be a 30 millimeter now, and that's gonna be there for two reasons. First off, it's gonna make this scope tougher. This one's gonna be able to take a beating more than a one incher will. And it's going to scale up the size of the lenses on the inside. So it doesn't have a whole lot of adjustment range. If you're expecting to be able to hit targets at a mile with this, forget about it. This one features, you know, it kind of favors two things on the inside. First, you know, the sizes of the lenses and then that thickness of the tube. And so you're not gonna get all that much adjustment. However, within practical distances, and we're talking about with a medium cartridge, uh, like say a 308, you're probably gonna be able to get this out easily past 600 yards. You could be able to get this out to 1,000 yards, especially if you have a 20 MOA base. And then that's really where most people are gonna be doing their shooting. They're gonna be somewhere between maybe 50 yards and you know, 600 at the max. And this is gonna be set up perfectly for that. And because they've made some of those compromises, this is something that's gonna stick with you for a really long time. And the image is gonna be gorgeous through here. Now let's take a look at the image you'll see that we have, number one, a whole lot of resolution. This actually beats quite a few scopes that I've tested that have price tags that are double, even triple the price of this. The image through here just is very difficult to beat. So if you want to be able to count tines on a buck, or you wanna be able to read the swaying grass, if you wanna be able to read Mirage, this can do all of it. The image through here really is stunning and it holds up edge to edge. That's not something that I can say for a lot of scopes in this price range, and especially with this zoom factor. Not only does it hold up edge to edge within the glass, as you dial around in the glass, you're not gonna lose any resolution either. And then as you start getting into dusk, that image is going to hold up as well. So if you wanna be able to take that last light shot, no problem this scope is gonna be able to handle it. In addition to the high resolution, you can see that it's a very bright image. Its color is just like that around it, so there's no odd color cast going on. It feels very natural looking through this. And the contrast is great, so you can see all kinds of little color gradations and details. If you wanna be able to see the color of an object, if you wanna be able to see the color of an animal that you're shooting at, you wanna be able to see every little thing that's going on in its fur, this is a scope that can handle that. Some of the other elements that will take this up from a typical deer setup is gonna be that three to 12 ratio, and that's gonna be all of the nitro scopes. This is going to have a 4X zoom ratio, I think on pretty much everything. So that's gonna be a six to 24, a four to 16. There's the three to 12, and then there's a two and a half to 10 as well. And if you can find that two and a half to 10, that's a really good one maybe for hog hunting so you can get a little bit closer and be able to deal with more difficult animals. This comes in a variety of setups, and some of them have gone by the wayside. When this originally released, there were tons of different options. You had second focal plane, first focal plane, MOA, MRAD, and then you had combinations of all of them. And some of those have kind of slipped away. So watch and see what's actually out on the market right now. Continuing with the deer hunting theme, this has cap turrets. These are not tactical target turrets. They don't have weird locks and things. They don't track up and down, so you're not gonna be able to use this to try to get on target at 1,000 yards by dialing. This is one where you're going to use the reticle for the most part in order to make your shots. You're gonna lock and leave this. Now you can dial with these, and you can see here in my tracking test that these turrets track perfectly. These are MOA, and they click through everything just the way that they ought to. Uh, these are ones that you could count on if you want to spin these in the field. But just be forewarned that you can easily lose your place because they don't track up and down, and they don't have a zero stop. 
But as far as the click quality itself, it actually feels really darn good. It feels like a tactical scope should be. And that's one of the things that this borrows. It borrows the perfect tracking and it borrows these really good clicks. They are very solid. These aren't ones that you're gonna accidentally skip off. And like a good tactical uh, target turret sort of thing, you can reset the zero on here and you can actually do it really easily. All you have to do is without any tools at all, no screwdrivers, no Allen keys, you just unscrew this top plate on top of the turret. Then you can pick the, uh, the, the turret cap up, flip it around to zero, set it back down. It sits on splines and then you turn this back down. They call this the toolless reset. And I love this. This makes it so easy to use out in the field. If you go out to the range and you want to be able to easily set your zero, maybe you forgot tools, maybe you don't want to have to drag out everything you have, you can fix this. And if you do something like accidentally drop your scope while you're out there, or somehow lose your zero, or you have to use somebody else's ammunition and zero up for it, again, all you need is the rifle and the scope. You don't need any special tools. This is a really cool setup. There is a gasket that runs here in the cap. And this is one of the things that helps to make this scope IPX7 rated. So that is one of the indications that this really is set up for hard outdoor use. IPX7 is one of the highest waterproofing ratings that you can have for an object like this. There's IPX8, which is just kind of, I don't know how well this is gonna perform. But this one, if you throw your buddy's rifle into the shallow end of a pool for half an hour during lunch and then he comes out, he can't be too mad at you because this is gonna be fine. Uh, this is gonna be able to handle splashes, puddles, uh, rain, whatever kind of stuff you're actually gonna be dealing with out in the wild, this is gonna handle it and you're gonna be okay. All of the controls through this scope are smooth and precise. That's the zoom ring. This turns very smoothly. So if you wanna spin this out in the field to be able to see more or less of a target, if you wanna get really up close and personal with one prairie dog, you can go ahead and crank it up to 12. If you wanna back it off a whole bunch so you can see a whole lot of animals, get it down to three, it's a very smooth turn. Same thing with the side parallax adjustment. And this is just smooth and reliable every single time. Not only that, I found that this tracked very well with the actual parallax adjustment on the inside. Sometimes you get good focus by rolling this, but you don't get perfect parallax. And this one nails them both down. Bushnell's been doing a really good job with that lately. Remember that parallax is the effect where if you don't have all of your focal planes in here perfectly aligned, if you move your eye off the center of the crosshair, you might actually be kind of looking around the crosshair and you'll miss your target. It's actually aiming someplace else. Try this with a scope sometime where you get behind it, look at a target, and then just kind of move your eye around very small amounts behind there. And you're gonna see that uh, the crosshair may move relative to the target. This is gonna lock that down so that if you are off just a little bit, the scope will not be, and you're gonna make that hit. One other moving part is going to be the eyepiece at the back, and this is a fast focus eyepiece. This is one that has a good amount of resistance to it. It feels a lot like the other controls, um, but this is one that shouldn't float around too much on you. A fast focus eyepiece can get you into trouble uh, just because it might accidentally spin while you're out in the field, but that's one of the good reasons why we have these uh, scope rings. Bushnell threw these in to make this an extra high value scope. Uh, you're gonna get these Butler Creek rings that have been rebranded for Bushnell. So you get the push button at the back, push forward at the front. Yeah, and these are just the good old Butler Creeks that everybody uses. So now you don't have to try to figure out which size is gonna fit you. Uh, this automatically comes with it. And this is gonna tell you if you accidentally bumped your diopter setting on the front. If this is spun off, then you know, okay, I gotta fix that. Some of the other goodies that come in the box include this sunshade, which is not entirely necessary, but it is quite nice. Uh, it's gonna keep out that extra light if you have, like maybe you're shooting into a sunset, you have the sun pretty close to you. You don't want that to be bouncing off the optics in here. But that's where we get to one of the great things about the modern Bushnell scopes. This is fully multi-coated. All the lenses are fully multi-coated with really good coatings. 
That's one of the reasons why the image is as stunning as it is. But it also does a really good job of just absorbing light and preventing a lot of those lens flare effects that you get from a slightly off axis light. You're not gonna get a lot of bloom and a lot of flash in here. You're not gonna get a lot of light leaks and bounces. This one is gonna stay true even if the sun is relatively close. And this one outperforms some scopes that I've tested that cost over a thousand bucks. And by the way, have I mentioned the price tag? This usually runs, even in the FFP models, somewhere in the 400s. So you can probably get this about 400 bucks. Uh, this is gonna vary, it depends on what the market is doing, but for the most part, you're paying a very reasonable price for a really unreasonable scope. This performs much better than I expected at first. There's one extra coating on the exterior lenses and that's called the exo barrier. This is one that I've actually tested a little bit. It's going to resist any kind of damage to the lenses, you know, from stains. Uh, there are certain coatings you can get on these lenses that if you touch it with your thumb and you leave that fingerprint for too long, then that's gonna be kind of indelibly etched into uh, that coating. It's gonna actually kind of damage the lens and it's gonna mess up your image. You might have things like pine sap that gets stuck places. This is going to resist all of that. And in their own testing, they found that really nothing can stick to it. And in my own testing, I found that to be the case. If I leave a, a thumbprint on there for a really long time, I can just come back and wipe it off. I could put glue on it, whatever. It's all gonna come off. And that means that this is gonna be much more rugged and available in the future. You'll be able to hand this scope off to your grandkids and say, all right, go to town. You know, this was what I had when I was a kid and you're fine. All right, let's take a look at some of the stats that I have uh, listed here. Uh, if you're interested in size, this without the sunshade is 13.7 inches. So it's pretty compact for what it is. It's a three to 12, not so huge. Eye relief is a whopping 3.9 inches. So that means if you've got a Magnum, this will handle it handily. Uh, this is one where you're not gonna worry about getting scope kissed. You're gonna have plenty of room. And in my testing, uh, this just felt very easy to get behind in any of the magnifications. If I'm cranked up to 12X, it's an easy scope to get behind. I don't feel like I have to, you know, kind of trombone my neck around in order to find the exact right spot to look through it. This one just comes to the eye. So if you're looking for that snapshot on a deer, you're just gonna whip this right up and you're gonna have that image. The weight on this, this is one of the slight drawbacks. This one is 24.2 ounces. So it is pretty heavy for a deer type scope. Considering the glass that you have in here, which I think is where a lot of the weight is coming from, and then the extra thickness of the tube, it's gonna be up to you to decide whether that's a trade-off you wanna take. If you wanna be able to you know, deal with a harsh environment, like you know, if you have to go climbing around on rocks and things, and you don't wanna be super concerned if you bonk it against a rock accidentally, if it's gonna to continue to work, then I think that weight is gonna be okay for you. Now I mentioned that the elevation and windage ranges are greatly reduced because of the sizes of the lenses and the thickness of the tube. So we're looking at only 60 MOA of travel total up and down on the elevation and or 17.5 milliradians. And that's gonna be both on the elevation and the windage. So yeah, that's not much at all. If you intend to hit targets at some of the longer distances, like you wanna be able to get your 308 out past 600 yards, then I recommend that you get some kind of compensating base, a 20 MOA, a 30 MOA, pop that on your rifle and you've got it fixed. And that's one of the nice things about how good the glass is through here. You're not gonna worry about, you know, at some of the closer distances, your image getting blurry because you're dialed all the way up. It's all gonna look great all the time. After viewing the features and the quality of this scope, I think you can understand what I'm talking about and why a lot of people might wanna use this. This is something that you could use to hunt deer from your tree stand. You could be in the same tree stand and be hunting coyotes. If you wanna crank this up to 12X and take out a prairie dog that popped up, it's gonna work. This is something that's going to take your typical deer capabilities and just crank them up to the next level. And for you guys that are more interested in tactical kinds of work, you wanna be able to defend your castle uh, at longer distances, you wanna be able to defend the homeland. You have that kind of tactical reticle on the inside if you choose one of the deploy uh, FFP reticles. And yeah, you can make those hits without even having to touch any of the turrets. Thanks a lot for watching y'all. I'll see you in the next video. And thank you to patrons of the Destructive Arts that made this possible. I have a bunch more scope reviews coming out. I've actually got them on the table right here. I'll see you around.
Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.